Today we have a bunch of news for you dealing with, well, some applications leaving the Nintendo Switch for good out of nowhere long before the Nintendo Switch is no longer relevant. So I'm a little bit confused about what's going on there. Sega's coming out of nowhere, putting Nintendo on blast, or more like uh, they think they could beat Nintendo in multiple categories. That is quite interesting, including a brand new concept. They're dubbing a super game. Sega! Oh, we're not done there. We have some updates for Mario RPG, Super Mario RPG, that releases later this month. Yes, we need to talk about that because there's some new features in this game, maybe even some new content to talk about. So that's pretty exciting. And then the Pokemon Company. You know, they haven't fixed Scarlet and Violet yet, but we now know when the second part of the DLC is coming. So... Without further ado, I just want to remind you that we are on a road to 150,000 subscribers. So I'd appreciate it if you would drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this or want to stay up to date on all Nintendo news, especially with Switch 2 right around the corner. Like, you know, we're trying to stay on top of that. And hey, go ahead and smash that bell icon to be notified of all future videos. <laughs> The first thing we need to do is talk about a company who made a recent change that actually I feel is a long-term benefit to what I do, but is also now doing something that I don't quite understand, and that is Twitch. So first up, Twitch made recent changes to allow us to now live stream. So now we're putting our podcast both on YouTube and Twitch at the exact same time live. So yeah, if you guys want to go follow our Twitch channel, you can down below at twitch.tv slash Nintendo Prime TV. Again, we'll have a link down below for you guys to go check that out. If you would rather watch our, our live streams, maybe all of our live streams, we should start dual streaming over there. I don't know. We'll see if that is something I decide to do moving forward, but our podcast at least is there. But besides that, there's also something happening with Nintendo Switch because if you guys didn't know, Twitch launched a Twitch app on Nintendo Switch back in 2021. Now, unlike PlayStation and Xbox, no, you can't stream games directly off your Switch to Twitch. And this makes a lot of sense. There's not a lot of extra resources on Switch to be able to do that. But you can watch people and chat in the chat rooms and it, it works pretty much like your phone app outside of the fact that you can't stream to Twitch from this application. Well, they have decided that in January of 2024, they will be removing the Twitch app off of Switch. Here's what Twitch put out there officially to get rid of all confusion. Hello. We are reaching out to let you know that we have made the hard decision to remove the Twitch app from the Nintendo Switch. The app will be removed on January 31st, 2024. Thank you for supporting Twitch streamers and communities on Nintendo Switch. For more Twitch content, please go to twitch.tv on your browser or twitch.tv slash downloads for the Twitch app on other devices. Thank you, Twitch. Now, this is obviously an email they sent out to people who signed up for Twitch or are logged into Twitch through the Nintendo Switch app. I honestly don't know why they're removing it. It's not like the, the Nintendo Switch is suddenly irrelevant by the end of January 2024. It's probably that there just isn't a very big user base, so maintaining the application probably isn't deemed a positive financial thing, but I think that's a little short-sighted. You see, there are only so many extra applications on Switch that are not just video games, right? We only have so many streaming services, and I think they're missing an opportunity because they could set themselves up to be a de facto go-to application for potentially live streaming Switch 2 games if they would just continue the support on Switch into it. So, you know, more of a long-term investment plan, but you know what? That's not what's happening, and it's an app I didn't use, so it's not like I can pretend that I'm sad about this. You know, I just always try to find alternative routes that maybe could lead to more positive results in the end. But hey, you know what? Twitch is making the decisions they're making. And uh, who knows? Maybe they reverse this decision if there's enough backlash because Twitch tends to change their mind every six months or so on several choices they make. Next up, we get to talk about one of my favorite companies in gaming and one I used to game on their consoles, Sega. Sega! 
Yeah, baby. I'm so excited to talk about Sega because they released some interesting documents. They did a Q&A session all about Sonic, and then they also released a giant PDF document talking about all of their plans for the future. It's obviously meant for investors to know what's going on, but it's very well put together. And in this document, they mentioned something called a super game. So what are they talking about? Well, you know what? Let's just quote them directly. So... It, a super game is going to be a major title that scales globally and will be out by the end of fiscal year, which ends in March of 2026. As the name implies, a super game involves the concept of a game that stands head and shoulders above normal games. I encourage stakeholders to look forward to the fruit of efforts, or our efforts, I think is what... They intended there. Now, this is really, really interesting just thinking about in general what this super game could be because they're basically saying, you know, we got Sonic, you know, we got this, Persona, all this other. You know what? This is something that's above the rest. I think they're looking for their Fortnite maybe or are they looking for their Mario Kart? I, I don't really know what this super game even is. There's no real descriptions, just that it's in active development with a planned, you know, by the end of March of 2026. I, look, guys, this is one of those crazy things that we probably should expect to be on Switch 2, PlayStation 5, Xbox, and PC. I just don't know what it's going to be because Sega hasn't really done a great job launching mega successful brand new IPs in quite some time. So I, look, they're, they're shooting for the stars and whatever this is, I hope it meets their probably super lofty goals. But sometimes you just need to release a quality product and be happy with the success rather than shooting for the stars. Because what's going to happen is if this is a really good game and it only sells, say, a couple million copies, it'll be instantly abandoned. And that sucks because you're leaving a core of something that can maybe be built up to something better. And speaking of that, um, Sega wasn't done because they brought up Mario. <laughs> Why are they, why is Sega talking about an IP they have no control over? Well, it's because it has to do with Sonic. So in a developer Q&A, they said that Sega has an internal goal for Sonic to catch up to Mario and surpass him. And they mean this in multiple fronts. They're obviously talking about game sales, uh, global recognition, and obviously global success. So you see the theme parks based around Mario. You see the Legos based around Mario and how well they're doing. You see how the Mario movie basically outdid the combined box office sales of both Sonic movies. And obviously, you're, we have to kind of just look in general at the fact that Mario is just a significantly more popular IP. And so they have the internal goal, which I guess is now known externally, uh, to get Sonic up to Mario's level. And yeah, we have crossover games like Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, and maybe there'll be other crossover games in the future. But it's interesting that they want to try to get Sonic back up to the same relevance of Mario. There was a time when there was at least a conversation of Sonic versus Mario, basically back in the Sega Genesis versus Super Nintendo days, but it never really was that close just in terms of actual sales numbers. And then obviously over the years, Mario has continued to maintain and even explode at times. Hello Mario Odyssey being the best selling 3D Mario game of all time. But Sonic has really just been sort of all over the place. Some games doing decent, getting four or five million in sales other games tanking. Sonic just isn't really even close to the popularity of Mario. I think it's nice to have an internal goal, but you also have to have a clear vision that connects with the gamers. And I think one of the hard things I've noticed with Sonic, just about how people reacted to Superstars and reacted to Frontiers, which I think both are actually pretty good games, it's that Sonic fans are very disjointed because the series has been very disjointed for so long. And because of that, I don't think the whole of the Sonic fan base even knows, like can even agree on what they want Sonic to be. And that's never really been a problem with Mario, with our side scrollers, or, you know, our, our, our 3D Marios. I mean, there's a large expectation the next 3D Mario is going to be open world because Bowser's Fury was an experiment that most people, Mario fans love. So Nintendo's been able to really keep the fans together for Mario over the years and sort of nod our heads in agreement on the direction. And that hasn't really been the case with Sonic. So you know what, Sega? I wish you luck. It's not like I don't want Sonic to hit the success levels of Mario. I have no horse in this race. I don't 
make more money because Mario's popular and Sonic's not, or Sonic's popular and Mario's not. None of it really matters. I don't care about these sort of IP wars. And to be clear, they're not saying that, you know, this is an IP war. They just have this goal that they want Sonic to be bigger than Mario's ever been. And I, I wish them luck. Sonic is, you know, more popular today than it's been in a long time. But I just don't know that you're close. And when, when you see the Mario movie drop and outdo both Sonic movies combined, and the Sonic movies were considered a success, it kind of lets you know how wide the gap is in the IP strength. So uh, take that for what it is. But you know what? I do think you have some building blocks here that maybe could lead to consistent increased interest in Sonic down the line. Next up, we now know when the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC is dropping. Nintendo gave us a brand new trailer for it and unveiled pretty much everything that we're getting. And look, we need to talk obviously about things like, hey, how about the new cups? We have the Acorn Cup, which features Tour Rome, Tours Rome Avanti. We have the Double Dash Track DK Mountain, the Wii Track Daisy Circuit, and Piranha Plant Cove. And then the Spiny Cup featuring the Tour Madrid Drive, uh, the 3DS's Rosalina's Ice World, Super Circuit's Bowser's Castle 3, and the Wii's Rainbow Road. They're also adding the playable characters of Diddy Kong, which first appeared in Double Dash, Funky Kong on Wii, and they're combining it with Pauline and Peachette. And there's a few other interesting features they're adding as well, some new music playing stuff, and I don't know, it's just pretty fascinating what they're packing into this final DLC, which does have technically more content than any other DLC they've done so far in the most recent uh, waves of DLC that they announced, you know, over two years ago. So honestly, look, I'm really excited this is coming. It's dropping November 9th. I'm going to be playing it. Heck, we might even live stream it. I'm just really excited to enjoy some goodness from Mario Kart and have a little finality. Of note, that means they're done updating Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and they're done updating Mario Kart Tour. And I think this sort of opens the door for whatever's next. And you know what? Whatever's next is probably on Switch 2, maybe also on our phones. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But uh, hey, well, at least we know when the final Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC is coming. 96 courses. I, I still am trying to process, as someone who's played every Mario Kart to date, that we have a Mario Kart game that's going to have 96 courses in it. That's insane. It's like four, like four Mario Karts worth of content. Wow. Next up, we're not done talking about Mario because Super Mario RPG got big updates today. There was a new five minute trailer dropped. Here's a look at that. And we actually got some new details from Nintendo that are quite interesting and maybe even involve brand new content, although we're speculating at this point because there's some information on the Japanese website. But here's what we got. You could swap party members mid-battle. There's gonna be an all new music menu, also a new bestiary, and yeah, Colix returns, but Nintendo actually teased something else. A special Ishi. And you might go, what the heck are you talking about, Nate? I gotcha. Ishi means stone in Japanese. And hey, if you know anything about Super Mario RPG and the stones, this could be something that unlocks a new area, a potential new boss battle. This is where we start to talk about how there could be brand new content. Now, I can't dive deep into the speculation on this one because believe it or not, I've never played Super Mario RPG. So this will be my very first time playing it. But just watching this five minute trailer, it really feels like they're doing this game justice. I've seen plenty of footage of the original. This looks like it's true to that, but adding on top, especially the cutscenes, And if they're adding new content as well, look, old and new alike are gonna come together to enjoy Super Mario RPG. I, I'm actually really, really excited for this one. So yeah, if you guys haven't pre-ordered it yet, we'll drop a pre-order link down in the description. But to be honest, uh, Super Mario RPG looks like a winner. And uh, I'm just really glad that they seem to be doing this game the justice that it apparently deserves. I have to say apparently because again, I haven't played the damn game, but everyone tells me it's awesome. So I guess I'll find out soon enough. So next up, we actually have the release date for the next wave of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC, the Indigo Disc or whatever. Yeah, it's launching, well, December 14th, which is interesting because they dropped this little update on Twitter, but they didn't give us any new footage. They didn't like make a big deal out of it. They just said, hey, we'll see you on December 14th. And they gave us a single image, you know, an art piece here with the date on it. Uh, I. Look, the art looks fine. You know, most of us just want to see the game fixed. And 
They still haven't really fixed it and patched it and fixed the frame rate issues and fixed some of the bugs, like how you can easily glitch out in caves and like fall through the map and some of the loading issues that can be happening. And there's just a lot of little glitches here and there all over it. Now, this isn't me saying Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are not playable and you can't beat them. Yeah, many people have. And you know what? There's a lot of really great ideas packed in. I just, I can't get excited for DLC for a game that like Nintendo even came out and sort of promised to fix and really hasn't been fixed. Uh, I, I think there's probably going to be a bigger impact on the next Pokemon game. I think Nintendo's going to be more involved with the quality assurance on that, on the future Pokemon games because Nintendo, you know, acted embarrassed about the state of Scarlet and Violet. So anyways, the new DLC is dropping December 14th for those that are excited. I just wanted to let you know because it is news. It is related to an exclusive major game on Nintendo Switch. And I, you guys do deserve to know when it's coming because a lot of you are, don't really care about the glitches and are enjoying the game anyways. That being said, folks, I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime, and all right, all right, you know what? That was Prime News. Hell yeah! Now that time I nailed it. No pretending or I, I smoked that outro. Wait, I'm still here, though.